Styling Forward 2011 is brought to you by Bossel and Metaverse Television with the sponsorship of A la Folie Champion Giza and Miss Azul 2011. Welcome to the brand new season of Styling Forward. Very very much anticipated from a lot of fashionistas on the grid. Big success last season, and now they've come back this year for the next nine weeks, where 16 contestants shall be given a different styling challenge by our two main judges each week. Folly Mills and Kamara Madison, we will get to that in just a moment and this is the first time for me here on this show i was an audience member last time so i'm very happy to be joined with veteran of starling forward <laughs> hosting miss dusa dragonash hello hi eddie i'm not sure about the word veteran no. <laughs> <laughs> but i'll leave that between the two of us and we'll talk about it later um it's fantastic to be back doing styling forward actually i loved it last year it was a departure from the norm it pushed the boundaries it pushed it with the challenge forward it um it brought very exciting movement to the grid i thought and i know i'm tremendously excited by uh starting again sort of episode one because i have heard a little bird say that it was very very diff difficult to pick the contestants for this competition i heard that too yep so of course we have our guest judges here as we say take it away eddie Yes, we do. Well, a new member of the judging team this season is Miss Kamara Madison, owner and designer of Trebo. Hello, Kamara. Welcome to the show. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Dusa. Thank you. Glad Hi. to be here. This is exciting. I'm looking forward to this. And how does it feel joining the team? Because you were, I assume, well, you were a guest judge on one of the episodes last year. I was, and I've been feeling guilty for having to eliminate someone since then, and I don't know how I'm going to feel after this season, but I'm really looking forward to this. I'm, I'm always interested in seeing how people take the items that we designers create and make them absolutely amazing, and it's just, I'm really excited. It's just been great fun. Very cool. Well, it's nice to have you on. We've also got uh, our first guest judge this season as well. Each week, of course, uh, Frolic and Camara welcome a guest judge to join them who are from somewhat inside the industry. And we have with us this week, Leandra Breen, a Miss Virtual World finalist last year and one of SL's finest models. Hello, Leandra. Welcome to the show. Hello, lady. Thank you for, for having me today. I am really excited too. I'm curious to see all the stylings and the models and what they have, what they have done. You were a contestant in last year's Styling Forward, so yeah. are you, uh, how was the experience for you last time? Um, it was a great journey. I always had a little trouble because I had to style many outfits for Styling Forward and for Miss Virtual World, but I wouldn't have missed it. It was just great. Awesome. Well, nice to have you on. Thank you, Leandro. We're looking forward to have you on the show today. And as always, also, we have our head judge. Head judge. Head judge. The leader of the pack. The, <laughs> the one that I think most contestants are most terrified of. Do you think that's right to say, Dusa? Yeah, I do think it's right to say, and I think they're right to be terrified, to be honest. 
very true. Frolic Mills, hello, welcome to the show again. Brand new season. Are you excited? I'm very excited, Eddie. Hi, hello everyone. Um, I'm telling you, I'm really, really excited. I think uh, season one, um, you know, as every season one, people were like, "What? what is this show? What is this all about? And I believe um, Styling Forward brought a lot of really interesting things into the grid. You know, we saw a lot of fashion styling competitions around the grid. We saw, um, you know, people changing the way things were before Styling Forward. And I think the impact and the influence of the show was absolutely great received. And, and, and I love to see how it impacted the grid. You know, you see amazing stylings. And Dusa, yes, I was telling Dusa earlier, you know, last year for our audition, I think we got like 15 girls, you know, and so this year, I, I don't know how many we got, but it was like, it seemed like the sim was filled with beautiful ladies and, and, and gentlemen styled to the T. And so this is going to be a much more uh, amazing season, I believe. And I think the things that we're going to be seeing are going to be amazing. So I'm looking forward to it. Let's get on with the show. Welcome, everyone. Styling Forward begins. Oh, my word. Okay. Well, we have our first contestant. Uh, the, um, the task was to style as your own fashion icon. Now, Eddie and I were challenged to do that as well, and we're going to leave you guessing for the time being as to <laughs> just exactly who we are. Um, so, our first walk down is Amazon Silverweb. Now, Amazon... Wow, it's very cute. Uh, Amazon has taken as her fashion icon Katy Perry. Katy Perry is American song singer and songwriter. I'm sure I don't have to tell anybody here. It's probably just me <laughs> that has to know. But... Um, Yes, Katy Perry. So we're going to go to our first judge for this. So, so we're going to go to Kamara first for feedback, shall we say. Oh my gosh, Amazon, this is so cute. I am a huge Katy Perry. I can't even say it. Katy Perry fan. And I'm just wondering how many boys Amazon's kissed. Or girls, I'm sorry. I can't even think tonight. <laughs> this is such a cute outfit. I love what you did with the shoes, with the whipped cream on them, all the little <laughs> goodies in the bowl. How clever to use a bowl as a skirt. Absolutely adorable. Well, Frolic told me that it was setting a high standard this time, and it's just fantastic. I'm going to bring in Leandra next. Leandra, what do you think about Amazon's outfit as Ka Katy Perry? Yeah, I love it too. I think she uh, catched the the character of Katy Perry with this outfit, uh, with the cute things, the sweet things, and the black hair, of course. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, Leandra. And Frolic. Hi, Amazon. Okay, Amazon, I am not going to be as nice as the other two judges. I'm afraid. Oh my. Um, I, I do think you did capture the spirit of Katy Perry. I can see, um, you know, what you were trying to do here. However, um, you know, you were just very lucky to find this and just put it on. But I can tell it's just a one, a one piece thing. So I would have, I, I mean, I think it's working for you. But I also think it's working for you because you were lucky to find it done for you. This is styling forward. It's a styling competition. I, and I wish you would have played with a little more of the elements to create the outfit yourself instead of letting the designer do that for you. Anyway, but you know what? You do look the part. Uh, and, well, you did good at least shopping. So there you go. But this is a styling competition and I want to see a lot of great styling from you and, and the others. So there you go. Okay, thank you, Amazon, very much. So it's over to you, Eddie. All righty, we've seen contestant number one. Thank you, Amazon. It's now time to go over to our second contestant to walk out, Aphrodite Brianna. Now, Aphrodite Brianna has gone for inspiration of Vivian Westwood. So this could be interesting, do sir. Fellow Brit. Fellow Brit, uh, indeed, and... Um, wonderful wonderful designer in her own right 
She she is a fashion icon, and um, she dresses as one as well, Vivian Westwood herself. So she she's does. not. Yes. And she keeps with it with age as well. As she grows older, she still stays the same. She looks very unique. She does indeed. It's, uh, so there we are, Aphrodite and Brianna looking very nice. All right, let's go over to our first judge, Dan Camaro. What do you think of Aphrodite, Brianna, Vivian Westwood? Hmm, I'm looking you over. Hello, Aphrodite. I absolutely love Vivian Westwood. She is one of the edgiest gals I've ever seen. I'm proud that she is older, not some young punk. <laughs> <laughs> Being that I myself am older, and I this is really fun. Um, I really like the hair with it. I like the combination of it. I think I would have liked to have seen something. I can't really put my finger on it. Some she's so out there. She thinks so out of the box. And even though this is fun and funky, it's still a little on the safe side for me. When I think of Vivian, I think of wild. All right, thank you, Kim. All right, Leandra, what do you think? Mm, yeah, I think the same. The outfit is nice, and the hair is matching. It's really good, but I think Vivian Westwood is um, a punk, a grunge designer, and she always looks, uh, yeah, like Kim Ellis, it's really out of the box. So um, I am not a big fan of the skirt. I think that's not her, but in whole, the look works. I love it. But if it is Vivian Westwood, I don't know. Alrighty, thank you, Leandra. And Frolic, do you agree with Kim and Leandra? Uh, yes, I do. I know. I don't, I mean, Vivian Westwood, I mean, after that, I understand the hair. You know, but Vivian Westwood, when the minute I heard that, I thought you were going to come up with this crazy yellow wig. And then I see you with the pink, and, and, and I mean, I don't know a reference of Vivian Westwood with that kind of hair or that color hair, because I know Vivian Westwood from an orange, you know, yellow, almost like the sun is coming out when I see that woman. And she is so much fun with everything she wears, and instead you brought us this dress which I mean I have nothing bad to say about the dress I think it's a lovely dress but no again I think the whole point of the show to style and to really mix it and match it and create something fabulous yourself not the designer it was completely missed so no I'm not excited about this not even a little bit oh no oh dear okay Aphrodite Brianna thank you Dusa who is our third Right, our third is Bluebell Andretti. Now, um, Aphrodite, if you'd like to clear the stage, Bluebell can come on. And because Bluebell is coming on as Lady Gaga, and I can see that um, Amazon has a big skirt, and I, God knows what Lady Gaga is going to look like. So, uh, or Bluebell as Lady Gaga, or taking that as the icon. Anyway, Bluebell says that she chose her because she's exciting. She thinks out of the box, she's fashion forward, quirky, and a true style icon in Bluebell's eyes. So, come on down, Bluebell Andretti. Lady Gaga is one of those that uh, we expect to see at least once, I think. Mm hmm. Wow. So, let me go to Chimera first for Bluebell as Lady, well, as taking the fashion icon, Lady Gaga. Hmm. Hi, Bluebell. Nice to see you. You look adorable. Um, again, Lady Gaga is like Vivian Westwood. She is out there. She's crazy. She wears meat and doesn't bring the steak sauce. Um, <laughs> I like this. I mean, the black, yes. But again, I think, in my opinion, it's a little safe. I just see her being really funky and weird and wearing things that you'd never expect, like, you know, add-ons to her face and her head and 
weird hats and I this is cute this is like a fan who's doing Lady Gaga to me okay Camara thank you very much uh, passing that to Leandra mm -hmm. okay this is Blueback hello <laughs> this is Lady Gaga in her first year or second year um, yeah, I have to agree, it is a safe style. It is truly Lady Gaga, yes, the pink and the belt and the, the glasses, but um, I have seen Lady Gaga in last time and she changed the look a bit. She's not always pink again. Um, I like it, it's a nice styling, but for me it's a bit too pink. Okay, thank you, Leandra. And we are over to Folik now. Hello, Bluebell. Okay, Bluebell, so I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you a little bit of props um, for the exercise. I am enjoying the exercise. However, I'm going to tell you something. Lady Gaga, I mean, just so you know, Eshia Tawad is one of my favorite designers in Second Life. But the way you combine the whole thing uh, not even Eshi would do it exactly like that. You know what I mean? She, when she builds those very, you know, construction-oriented dresses, she she makes them look so elegant and so fabulous. And I think the problem that you're having here, Bluebell, is that you managed to turn Eshi Atawara and Lady Gaga into a cheap outfit. You know, this looks like Lady Gaga from the Kmart edition, you know? And the glasses, they're horrendous. Lady Gaga would never wear cheap looking glasses like that, you know? So Lady Gaga is crazy and fabulous and out there, but she is so immaculate and so artistic in her presentation. And you turn that a little bit into cabaret, I'm afraid. So I give you props for the originality of the, of the outfit, but I don't think we have the spirit. I, I think you forgot the artistic part of Lady Gaga. You just took like the you know, like the cabaret, you know, and vulgar kind of Lady Gaga. And it's not working for me at all, I'm afraid. But thank you for your efforts, Blue. Okay, thank you, Frolic. Uh, Bluebell, thank you very much. Nice comments there from the judges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all righty, let's bring out our fourth contestant. It is Danae Ruby. Now, Danae Ruby's inspiration is Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, screen legend, Elizabeth Taylor. Sadly, he's well passed away earlier this year. Unfortunately, the age of 79. I did my research before the show. Danae Ruby, oh, very nice. All right, Danae, welcome to the show. Okay, let's go to our first judge, Kamara Madison. Danae Ruby, this inspiration is Elizabeth Taylor. What do you think? Lovely. Danae, you have always got such a beautiful elegance to you. First thing I looked for with the violet eyes. Your eyes are lovely green. <laughs> the, drown, the gown is beautiful. Let me pan back. Hold on. I think you look lovely. Um, um, gosh, what can I say? Again, I, I mean, I think you're absolutely stunning. I would have liked to have seen maybe just a little bit more of a vintage um, Elizabeth Taylor because in her youth, she was one of those women that when she entered a room, she stopped the entire room's attention and was all on her. She had those gorgeous eyes. She had a manner about her. She was the ultimate diva. You are stunning. You're beautiful. If you walked in the room, would you grab everyone's attention? Maybe not. I would have liked to have seen you kind of capture that a little bit more of the flash of old Hollywood. This is a beautiful gown. But the black, maybe have, you know, like the gown that she wore in, um, that red gown that she wore in Gone with the Wind, that kind of thing. I would have liked, or that was, I'm sorry, wrong person. But that type of Hollywood glamour that just grabs you, pulls you in, and holds you tight. This is beautiful and elegant, but safe again. 
everybody. Thank you, Kamara. Leandra, what do you think? Hmm, what do I think? Hello, Danny. Um, yeah, I think it's gorgeous. It's a great styling. I love the fur, I love the cigarette, I love the hair, the hair's matching. It's, it's a vintage style. Um, I would love the violet eyes if you um, choose, uh, would, if you would have chosen that. Um, yeah, it's it's vintage. It, it's a bit Liz Taylor, but it's really safe. It's, um, it's a safe hope. Nice and, and well done. But I think it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alrighty, thank you, Leandra. Alright, Frolic. Hi, 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 Danae. Um, well, you know what, Danae? I am going to defend you here because I, even though I completely understand what Chimera said about the vintage look, because, you know, the, the big years and the big, I mean, I mean if, if you were to grab Liz Taylor, you know, at her absolute best, and when she was a real fashion icon, yes, and then you have to go back to Virginia Woolf, and you have to go back to, you know, to those references of the 50s and the 60s, and, but, and, and, and you did a great style, I love what you're wearing, I think you look incredibly beautiful, How and I can totally see Liz Taylor picking up an Oscar in this dress, so I'm going to give you, you know, a 9 out of 10 for doing it but yes i think it would have been even better if you would have gone with the vintage um elizabeth taylor because that's when she shined uh big time you know i think you picked up some later years uh styling but you know what i out of all of the ones that i've seen today danny i think this is the one that strikes me and you do um i think you did well i think it's beautiful i can totally see elizabeth taylor in that and I don't care about the eyes, just so you know, guys, that is my fault. I told them they did not need to look like the person, just capture the essence of the of the fashion style. Danae, honey, you are, um, you're my favorite so far. Very well done. Ah, very nice. Well done, Danae. Thank you, judges. Danae, you can now head back. Lisa, who's next on the list? Okay, right, I will go and bring out the next contestant. Alrighty, now contestant number five is Didier Rascon, our first male. Our first male. Now Didier Sorry, Rascon. did you did you steal my <laughs> you, you stole my introduction, <laughs> didn't you? I didn't know where you were. You didn't know where I was. I was standing here muttering to myself mainly, oh. I think. That explains it. Do you want to do the rest? Yes, I do because okay. uh, this is rather fabulous. Um, uh, yes, it's Didier Rascon, and uh, the fashion icon Didier has chosen is Baptiste Giacconi, very sultry Lagerfeld uh, model. So, um, Camara, let's come to you first. You definitely nailed the hair. I mean, you have that wonderful bouffant, like. 50s throwback ducktail looking hair. I love that. That is awesome. Great job. I think that you uh, definitely pulled together the outfit, the little touch of goth with the elegance of it. Um, I'm looking you over a little better. You know, this job is so tough sitting here looking <laughs> over these good looking guys so hard. Um, I like it. I would one of, one of my little pet peeves in SL with um, jackets on men is the men tend to wear the bottoms of the jackets a little too high. I used to um, manage a men's uh, suit department for Nordstrom's, and traditionally the bottom of the jacket should meet up with the thumb, the end of the thumb, and the, your jacket's a little short. But other than that, I really, really love the look, and I think you nailed it. Great job. Thank you very much, Chimera. And over to Leandra now. Yeah, well, that's my favorite for now, yeah. <laughs> for now so far, because, um, yeah, he captured the, the type of, of modern. 
I love the belt, the, the little thing on his um, chest. What is it? A necklace? Can't see quite. Yeah. I think that the look of the model he wants to capture. I don't mind capturing him either. Okay, over to Frolic now, please. Hi, Didi. Okay, Didi, um, I'm going to tell you, I happen to know this model very well. I know he, he does a lot of modeling for Fendi and Karen Lagerfeld and Chanel. And he's one of my favorites, for sure. And I'm going to tell you, unfortunately, I know exactly what reference you used uh, to style this. In fact, I am going to be mean to you, and I'm going to paste it um, for everybody to look at, Which because I think you actually did a good job. But I do have some comments to make um, on this, okay? I think you did a similar style, Didi, um, um, to the model and to, the, and to what Baptiste would wear and the elegance that he portrayed. Uh, I mean, as far as the outfit goes, but I am not seeing the elegance of Baptiste because one of the things about this man is that he is the king of the black and white. Um, Baptist is a man that either is naked or he's wearing black and white, you know, and that is what he became a signature for. So I do see what you went for, but Didi, I have to tell you, I think you had a lot of time to think about the little details, and yes, it looks almost the same, but I don't, it doesn't look elegant to me, Didi. You know what I mean? It's like you, you left your shirt a little bit open, and you know, the boots are a little bit too much. Um, you know what I mean? It's like you went exactly for the picture, but you forgot to look the sharpness of, of what that man represents. This to me looks a little bit like a cowboy who is, you know, who stole the jacket from somewhere, like Chimera said, and it's even a little short for you. And uh, anyway, so keep in mind that it's not only to duplicate an outfit from real life into a cell or for styling forward, it's also the essence of the person and that had to be a very impeccable black and white and unfortunately I don't see impeccable today but thank you I, I think it, I, you know as far as the exercise I think it's a beautiful effort thank you okay Frolic thank you very much and thank you Didier alrighty next up is Federica Gaultier now Federica's inspiration is Rihanna Rihanna's become a, a, a very popular style figure, I think, within the last few years, especially the last two years or so. I remember she made that big statement where she dyed her hair red, which was very uh, became very popular. I don't think it's red anymore. I saw a picture of her yesterday, and it wasn't red. It was like uh, like frizzy and brown. But it uh, looks like Federica's gone for the red hair. Anyway, Federica, hello. Right, Kamara Madison, over to you. Hi Federica. Yes, I agree. I liked it actually when it was that bright red. It, that was so stunning. Federica, I'm going to ask you to rebake for me. Unfortunately, you're roost for me, so I can't really tell exactly how you threw everything together because it's not fitting right at the moment. But judging from what I can see, um, the hair is great. I don't know. The, I always think of Rihanna as being kind of the leather and lace girl. She tends to wear very body conscious, um, bootylicious, sexy clothing and still have class. And I think she just disappeared. Uh oh. She sat on a rocket and left. So. I'm sorry, that could have been my fault. I, I did a little bit of um, um of a rocket for her, but... <laughs> she seems to have actually lifted her off and she's just not come back yet. Um, very cool. Okay, well... Um, I don't know. <laughs> Very bizarre okay. situation, actually. It is. But right. Maybe, we should, so maybe we should move on to the next yeah, one. I think probably we should move on to the next one. Um, who is actually Hadaluna Danes? 
so um, I'm just, yeah, we'll just give Hadaluna a second to prepare to get on. Um, that's a first for starting yeah, forward. Just, I'm not quite sure. You know, that's one way of giving somebody the rocket frolic. Yeah. Um, I don't actually have a... Um, I am so sorry. I don't know what happened. It's supposed to be a diversion rocket that takes the person up and, you know, makes them look exactly as they are and then brings them right back. But the rocket and the woman disappeared, so I don't know what happened. You know, Frolic, I know we're supposed to eliminate two people tonight, but she's not yet. We haven't even gotten through the lineup yet. Hey. I am so sorry. All right, anyway. <laughs> Well, I just hope she's not um, actually panicking anywhere. So, Hadaluna is here, and Hadaluna has taken us her fashion icon, Kate Moss. So, I'm going to go straight to Chimera because, you know, <laughs> while we're waiting to find a rocket in the sky somewhere. <laughs> Poor Federica. I feel bad for her. <laughs> Somewhere she's orbiting around Basel right now. Um, hi, Adaluna. Kate Moss. Kate Moss is that lovely um, waif. That's the, when I think of Kate Moss, I think of waif. I think of that sort of almost like fairy kind of light person, but with an edge. And uh, obviously a um, kind of jaded past as well with her addictions and, and such. I like this. Uh, this does look like Kate to me. Again though, I think it's a little safe. Um, it's, I'm trying to put a finger on what I'm trying to say here. It, the, I see her wearing more earth tones versus the silver white. Um, I see her being a little darker but still that waif-like look to her and this just um i can't really put my finger on what it is i'm trying to say here but it just isn't doing it for me it seems a little safe i like it but it's not one of the things that kate is to me is she's always couture even when she's in her grubby she's she tends to have that bit of a couture edge and um i'm not seeing that in this thank you very much Kamara, and passing to leandra Yeah, I see Kate Moss in, in this. Um, you edit your sh edited your shape a bit, I think, in the in the, the face part. The silver, yeah, I'm not sure about, but the the whole dress is is working for Kate Moss. The only thing I don't like is that big black belt. I don't know why you why you uh, choose that one. Um, I think it would be better without that. It is catching my, my view and you, you know? I don't look at your face, I just look at this belt. <laughs> so, but in whole, yes, mm -hmm. I see Kate Moss. Thank you very much, Leandra. And Frolic? Yes, madam, here I am. <laughs> um, okay, Hadaluna, I, um, yeah, you know, I'm gonna tell you what I think you did. I think you grabbed a picture of Kate Moss modeling for whomever in a very irrelevant, you know, moment that where she might have wore something like that because she was asked to by a designer. But I don't think you captured Kate Moss. Kate Moss was discovered by Calvin Klein and she was the ultimate jean model, you know, who would uh, wear a pair of jeans with this amazing jacket and fur and, you know, yes, Kimmy, a little bit couturish, but also very casual. She was the queen of the casual couture. You know, it was Kate Moss who told us that jeans were absolutely fabulous and could be, you know, a, a great thing to wear anywhere you go. So, yeah, Hada, I, I see what you did. Um, yeah, I think it's okay, and yes, it looks like something that should be on some runway, but I don't think it's Kate Moss. I'm sorry, I don't. Anyway, I'm done. Okay, Hadaluna, please would you leave the stage for now? Head over to you, Eddie. Alrighty, next up we have Helen Zora. Helen is dressed as Beyonce 
in her video, Run the World. Very popular song. I used to hate that song when it first came out, but now I'm, it was it became very addictive to me. Um, says here, Helen in her own words, Beyonce is a strong, beautiful, powerful icon. So Helen Zora is Beyonce. I don't know if you've seen the video, Camara, Run the World. I assume maybe you have. What do you think of Helen Okay, Eddie, Beyonce? just because I like Frank Sinatra too <laughs> doesn't mean I don't know Beyonce. I wasn't sure. <laughs> If my the kids husband had it on or something. Oh no, I listen to Beyonce. I love Beyonce. I have a really wide range of music loves. And if my husband could build a shrine somewhere in our house to Beyonce and Michelle Pfeiffer, <laughs> he would. But it would have to be tasteful. Um, <laughs> okay, Helen. Um, I'm sorry, but you're Ruth for me as well. Um, but I can see what you did. Beyonce to me is someone who takes hoochie and makes it elegant. <laughs> you know, she wears some of the most daring outfits, but at all times she looks elegant. I can't, you know, I don't know how she manages that, but I think it is the goal of many women in this world to be able to pull that off to not look like she's going to be a streetwalker, but be able to make it look classy and elegant like Beyonce does. This dress does not do that for me. <laughs> this dress is pretty, but to me, it's almost a little too covered up for Beyonce. The hair is fabulous. I see the gloves. I don't see the attitude. It's the best way I can put it. Beyonce is very safe in her body type. She is not a twiggy. She is a very beautifully sculpted woman, and she shows it off at its absolute best light. I don't think that dress does that for you. Okay, thank you, Kim. Leandra, what do you think? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't like the hair, sorry. <laughs> I think the hair is clashing against the skin. Helen, um... I yeah, you you got the shape of Beyonce. The the whole uh, look is Beyonce, uh, but maybe you have uh, chosen some some details more. The the hair is from styling hair. The hair is good, but I don't like the color. I I, I don't know. Okay, but yes, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Leandra. I love the way you uh, do this. It's, you're going into every detail, which is great. Alrighty, Frolic, what do you think? Yeah, Leandra's lovely. You know, she goes, "Oh, I don't like the hair. I don't like the dress. I don't like. The, I don't like the gloves. I don't like anything." But it's okay. <laughs> it's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're so cute. Okay, Helen, so here's how it is. This is a mess. This is as close to a fashion emergency as I've ever seen it. The gloves with that dress, it's like insane. I mean, that is so poor taste. I mean, you have the gold and, and the yellow and then those gloves that look like biker things. I am not getting Beyonce. If you were to say, not say who you were representing, I would say, oh, she left. It wasn't my words. I hope not. She, she disappeared from me. Well, anyway, I didn't like it. So. That wasn't another rocket, was it? <laughs> no, I didn't give her one, I promise. <laughs> mm, maybe somebody's throwing we're people gonna have off the to keep, We're going to have to keep an eye on that frolic guy. I can see that bas basket of rockets he has behind his chair over here. Poor girls. Right, well, uh, moving forward, we are with Imani Enzo. And Imani Enzo has taken as... Her um, inspiration, fashion icon Rihanna. So, Camara. Well, yummy. <laughs> this is this is sexy. This is a little more like what I think of when I think of Rihanna. I think of her as being very feminine with a biker edge and <laughs> this looks like that to me 
The wrist bracelets are perfect. The hair, I love uh, the pre-red hair look, the big sunglasses. I'm liking this, but again, it's still just maybe a little bit safe. I keep thinking back to the day we did the auditions when everybody did the avant-garde and it was so edgy and it was, we seriously sat in Skype going, oh my God, who do we pick? Today I'm seeing a much safer side to everyone and it's a little disappointing, but this I like. I, I like it. I could still see maybe a few extra details. Maybe the red hair would have been a nice touch, um, but I like the look. Okay. Thank you very much. And Leandra? Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> oh, wonder. <laughs> but I think um, I had the same problem last year. We had to, uh, to style a character. And mm -hmm. uh, what I did, I looked at this character and tried to find all things uh, on that pic, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a problem of a lot of girls today. They have a pic, they have an imagination, and they try to look like that. And uh, styling is to catch the, the, the spirit of someone, of, of something. Mm -hmm. And uh, Imani, I think you did a good job on that. I love it. It's not uh, one of those Rihanna outfits, uh, which are always seen in, in pictures. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. Thank you, Leandra and Frolic. Imani, you just made my day, woman. You made everybody else here look very, 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 um, amateurish as far as styling. You look like a professional stylist. This is exactly what the competition is about. You look absolutely perfect. I see Rihanna all over the place. Every single detail you're wearing is absolutely gorgeous. Nothing out of place. Nothing I would take off. Nothing I would add. Beautiful, Imani. You are definitely with the program here. Wow. There you go, Imani. Some good news. Okay, so it's over to you, Eddie. Thank you, Imani. Next up, we've got Michaela Benazi. Michaela Benazi, uh, inspiration comes from, again, Lady Gaga. Oh, look at that walk. Look at her, she's walking down here, Lady Gaga. An icon and inspiration in the industry. So there we are, Michaela Benazi. Lady Gaga, Chimera, second Lady Gaga of the show. What do you think of Michaela's efforts? Okay, I'm seeing a lot more ooh ah gaga ooh ah ah in this. Um, I love the shoes. The sh she's known for funky, weird shoes. Love her shoes. She always surprises me. I love the glasses with that sort of steampunk looking thing going on. Um, the hair is great, very gaga. The hood on the hair is great. The outfit itself, to me, is, I don't know, it just doesn't do it for me, but I can see the belts with it, I like the bare legs, that's very gaga. I think the look overall is good, but the actual body piece isn't, I don't know, it doesn't look gaga to me. She was always very, she just seems to be a little more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, geometrical and just kind of funky and this looks like a leather biker top to me which is good but not quite in my eye gaga but the rest of the look is awesome love it thank you kim leandra yeah that's um the better version of lady gaga um i see um Michaela, uh, just gray so i can't say something for the outfit, I just see the hair, the glasses. Yeah, it's Gaga. For the outfit itself, I can I can't say anything because I see I don't see it. Okay. Okay. And frolic. Hi, Michelle Benazzi, Miss Virtual World, USA. Listen, Michelle, I'm going to be very hard on you because for two reasons. First, because you are in Miss Virtual World. And second, because I know you're a fabulous model. I think if I was to cut your head off 
you would be one of my favorites. Loving the hair, the glasses, the makeup, everything up there is working for me. And you know what? Even the bodysuit with the chain, it looks good to me. But then, I don't know, it's like, take a look at around your, your wrist, honey. You chose an outfit that is not even finished correctly. You know, Lady Gaga would never wear something like that. And the socks don't even get me started. What the hell were you thinking when you chose those socks that are not even properly done? You know, they're edgy and, they're, and there's much still over the place. And if I carry around, it looks like your leg is falling apart. See, Michelle, honey, I think you had a great idea, but make sure you finish things correctly. You know, the finishing touches is what separates the great models, the great stylists from the amateurs. And Michelle, I know you can do this and that's why I'm not forgiving you. Your face is gorgeous, you're so gaga. And then the bottom is like, you know, Lady Gaga got run over by a truck or something. So, I don't know. There you go. Honesty is key here at Starting Forward. Thank you, Kayla. All right, do so. Right, well, next we have Natsuka Miliandrovich. And Natsuka is, has chosen as her icon Audrey Hepburn at Breakfast at Tiffany's. So come on down, Natsuka. Okay, Chimera. Now, we were talking about Audrey Hepburn earlier, weren't we? I love Audrey Hepburn. I could sit there and watch Breakfast at Tiffany's over and over again and never tire of it. My daughter has that famous black dress. Actually, that's who I'm emulating today, is that famous black dress with the cigarette lighter. I just love that picture. Love, love, love. This is so elegant and so beautiful. Um, one of the things about Audrey Hepburn is that she had such a like almost like a dull quality to her face and she was so delicate and she was so slender and tiny and this dress I really like what you've done with this in a lot of ways this is that poster for me um, the dress is elegant and beautiful I love the cigarette lighter it's well scaled which is hard to find in here the rings the jewelry the crown um, it's lovely. You look beautiful. I think you really did capture Audrey Hepburn. If I were to see you come into a room, I would think, oh, look, it's Audrey. I like it a lot. I would have liked to have seen the makeup, though. I mean, when you consider the era that Audrey Hepburn was a star in, um, it was the red lips and the, the delicate eye makeup. It wasn't as heavy as what we see now. And so maybe maybe the makeup might have been just a little different, but the overall appearance is lovely. Great job. Thank you, Kamara. Leandra. Yeah. Mitsuka, I I don't wonder why you choose what we have done because I see you in this um I see you as her before you did it today. Um, I know you're a bit younger, and I always thought you were a kind of Audrey Hepburn, so yes, a good choice for today, and you look lovely. You captured her. Thank you very much, Leandra, and Frolic. Natsuka, darling, you are beautiful. I'm telling you, you totally have the um, Hepburn thing going. You look absolutely glamorous, simple, beautiful. Easy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. So there you go. <laughs> thank you very much, Frolic, and thank you, Natsuka. You can go backstage now. And over to you, Eddie. Alrighty, next up is Paulina Lefebvre. And Paulina's uh, inspiration is Alexander McQueen. Now listen to this. Savage Beauty at the Costume Institute of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York City. There we are. Kamara Madison. Alexander McQueen inspiration here for Paulina. What do you think? Oh my God, after that title, I think I need a nap. Wow. Yes. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, I'm trying to Google this so I could see what your inspiration was here. I'm sure I've seen this a hundred times. I just want to refresh my memory here. 
Ah, yes. Okay. Alexander McQueen was one of those designers that would take the most elegant, glamorous... Oh, hey, I recognize parts of that dress. Um, it just delicate, beautiful, feminine clothing and do a black face with it or a hood <laughs> or something really bizarre, really weird shoes. He would take that classic elegance, beauty, and just shock it. And I loved that about him. Um, I used to love to see what his uh, new lineup would be for the fashion weeks and whatnot, just to see what kind of weird thing he did this month or this year, this season. I see that in this. This dress is lovely. Um, not really his style in the skirt. I don't really see him doing the florals quite as much um, as what you're going for here. I, but the, um, the makeup is a good shocker, but maybe not quite enough. This is lovely. Um, if you were to tell me that you were Alexander McQueen's model at this point, I would look at it and go, I'm not seeing it. It's lovely gathered together, but I don't see it being Alexander. All right. Thank you, Kim. Next, Leandra. Okay, Paulina. For the title, I would give you a, a 10. <laughs> uh, for the whole styling, you captured it. But for me, it's a bit Alexander McQueen light. You can dare to be a bit more shocking when you when you do some uh, such an outfit next time. It, it all can dare a bit more uh, out of the box. Not over styling, but um, yeah, some wow. I love it. It works for me, but as I said, it's an Alexander McQueen line. All right. Thank you, Leandra. Frolic. I think Frolic got okay. the rocket. Oh, right, there. No, I'm just really confused as to what her styling icon is. Um, because obviously she starts styled after Alexander McQueen. So she styled, and please correct me if I'm wrong, after a dress that she saw at the Institute of New York Fashion Institute. Is that what it is? Exactly. It is. The styling is Alexander McQueen, Savage Beauty at the Costume Institute of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York City. Okay, Paulinita, so I'm going to tell you what. I think you look beautiful. I think the dress is gorgeous. I think you look good. I'm, I don't like that makeup with that dress. That dress is so elegant and so beautiful on you, and it looks so smashing. And then you have that kind of punk uh, makeup, which does not make any sense to me at all. I understand that McQueen had, um, you know, very heavy makeup inspirations, but this in particular is not working for you. Now, Paulina, the problem here is that you got the exercise completely wrong. You were supposed to style after your fashion icon, not after your favorite dress. Do you understand the difference? So, um, so I don't know if you captured any essences because I can't see what is, it is that you're doing. So I'm, I'm going to take it as if you styled after any of Alexander McQueen's models, which I suppose is okay. And then I'm gonna give you um, a passing grade on the dress. I think it, it is, it could be very much an Alexander McQueen dress. However, um, I cannot capture the spirit of anything, unfortunately, uh, because I don't know, there is no person behind it to, to observe it. Thank you, Paulina. Okay. As Paulina moves backstage, we're going to bring forward Ramza Love. So Ramza Love, favorite fashion icon is David Beckham. Now I haven't had any sneaky cams backstage, so I can't see them till they're out in the middle. I'm looking forward to this. So Ramza, if you can move down the steps to the front of the stage, thank you. I'll just bring in Chimera. Well, first I'd like to say anything David Beckham is fine with me. Mm -hmm. I love that commercial on TV with the gal from uh, 
I, I can't remember the name of the television television show where she's sitting on the beach drinking and she texts that David Beckham is seen on the beach and everybody runs off to find him and then he walks up to her. I, I, if I were her, I would just melt right then and there because I think he's fabulous. Um, David Beckham, huh? Ramsey, you are fabulous. I just could sit here and look at you all day long. You are so beautiful. Am I seeing David Beckham in this? No. But you are styled impeccably. <laughs> I, I love the look. I'm Googling to see if I see anything that looks like David Beckham ever wore this. Um, I love the feel that you put together. I love the collar piece that you've got on. I love the fact that you have the British shoes on, which brings out David totally and down the pant legs. Um, but I'm not seeing this as David Beckham. I would look at this and say, okay, he looks really hot, sexy man, gorgeous, sit here and stare and drool for hours. David Beckham, not seeing it. Okay, Chimera, thank you. Leandra, how about you? Yeah, okay, I have, <laughs> again, a problem. Um, I don't see David Beckham either. I think the outfit is great style. It's, it's edgy, it's sexy, he looks quite good. But um, I try to remember if I have seen David Beckham any any time in, in something like this and I have to say no. He is a, a soccer player, yes, but um, I think he's a bit more uh, noble style. Interesting. Frolic. Hi, Dusa. Hi. Okay, Ramsa, you know what happened here. I think I know what happened here. I think you did so well in your audition. Uh, you were the first person I picked, and you looked almost the same as I picked you. And you said, ooh, I did so well with this, I want to keep it. Listen, Rance, I'm going to tell you something. The absolute, what we are looking here is for someone who can change like a chameleon. You understand? You need to be, to be one day avant-garde, like what you're doing right now, which is the absolute opposite of David Beckham. Beckham is like the most glamorous Brit man in the history of the universe. Mm -hmm. He is sexy when he's on the football field, and when he goes out at night, he is impeccable. Not editorial clarity, David Beckham. Editorial clarity is a cheapy, <laughs> cheapy cop. Okay? So, so Ramsa, oh. listen. So when you, I mean, I don't even need to Google it because if I if I type David Beckham on Google image and I pull all of the pictures, I can guarantee you that 80% of David Beckham is either playing football or very elegant with beautiful scarves, with blazers, with ties, you know? So this, even if David Beckham ever wore this to like the Rio de Janeiro carnival, well, fine, but this has not captured the spirit of David Beckham, not even a little bit, do you understand? Ramsa, so it was all about getting into the person and what do they represent and what do they, you know, bring forward in fashion. And no, this is not him, not even not even close, Ramsa, I'm so sorry. Okay, so thank you, Ramsa, very much. Um, okay. Yeah, he needs that extra accessory of the little baby girl. Yes. Oh. Next up, Rissa Frilla. Now, Rissa Frilla's icon is Paris Hilton. Mm. Paris Hilton, right? Camara Madison. What do you think of this? <laughs> the little baby girl. I was just thinking little baby girl and the wife that never smiles. I'm looking. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I gotta move my camera. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, Risa, I love it. Um, yeah, if you were to walk in the room, I would definitely say, oh my God, Paris Hilton is here. That is definitely Paris. Um, one thing I will nitpick, and this is really, really tiny, and get the pun here in a minute. Her dogs are extreme miniatures. The dog's too big. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> for her. I mean, she literally could put six of her puppies in a handbag and call it uh, couture. I think this is adorable. I think you did a really, really good job. I love the animations. I love the detail you put into this. Uh, definitely Paris Hilton. It's totally speaking to me. This is, to me, this is the best I've seen today. Thank you, Kim Leandra. <laughs> yes, she is Paris Hilton. There's no doubt. <laughs> From the hair, over the glasses, over the doggy, the pink. The clam, the jewels, yeah, that works. And That's how you look and like Paris Hilton. I agree. And Frolic, what do you think? Hola, oh, Lee, hola, oh, uh, Risita. <laughs> All right, Risa, yes. I mean, it is undoubtedly a very beautiful exercise. The only thing I'm going to tell you, and this is just a warning, I'm not even going to be rude or anything like that, is. Uh, be careful with the jewelry, with the overdoing of things, because Paris Hilton is very glamorous, she's very fabulous, but she is uh, never overly done. In fact, she's quite minimalistic. The only thing I'm gonna, um, I would love for you actually you to take off is that necklace in the middle of your body. I don't think you need that. I think it clashes a little bit between your headband and the gold, and it's like the, the pearls on the dress. It's like a little bit too much, Risa. And honestly, I don't think you need it. But you know what? This is absolutely Paris Hilton. You capture her and you look absolutely gorgeous, woman. So thank you. Back okay. to you, Okay. Thank you very much, Eddie. Thank you, Frolic. Thank you, Risa. So, of course, now we're moving on to Rosalka Callisto. Now, Rosalka has done somewhat unusual change and I'm really dying to see this. Rosalka's inspiration is the late international style icon Isabella Blow, known as the muse of hat designer Philip Tracy and credited with discovering fashion designer Alexander McQueen and model Stella Tennant and Sophie Dahl. So come down Rosalka. Thank you. And we go to Camara. You know, it's seriously not fair that I have to go first. I think next time, Frolic has to go first. Only fair. I don't have a chance to look really well beforehand. This is gorgeous. I love the look. Very, very, very Isabella hat. Love the hat. Um, I'm such a hat person in real life, too. I have quite the collection. and. Unfortunately, not as many opportunities anymore to wear them. Um, part of this is still gray for me. The bodice of the dress, the sculpted fit over the bodice or the over the waist is gray to me. Um, but I like the way you've put it together. I definitely see a lot of Isabella in this. Um, she was more known for wearing a very dark red lip, just my own nitpicky thing um, and she was also one who made her hat the statement piece of her garment and this is lovely I think maybe um, gosh not everybody would know who she is so walking into a room you wouldn't necessarily say oh <laughs> that's Isabella but I think you did a beautiful job. I like the way it all pulls together. Okay, now your dress is starting to rest for me. Um, I think you did a lovely job. I think it's a little safe in uh, just that she was so dramatic in her headpieces and in her hair and such. So I like it though. I think you look lovely. Thank you very much, Camara. Leandra. Honestly, I have to do you now. <laughs> Thank you, Kimera, for speaking a bit longer because I had the chance to look at Isabel Blow. And yeah, the headpiece is working, the hair also. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I like the styling, I like the, the, the whole look. It is a bit safe, but it works. I would recognize you as her when I see you. Thank you very much, Leandra. And Frolic. 
I was laughing, Kimmy, because for the first time in a very long time, I had no idea who this woman was. And <laughs> I am... You've looked her up. Oh my God, she's the goddess of hats. <laughs> well, most importantly, she was Alexander McQueen's muse. Yeah. So, um, and she's uh, also an editor from a magazine. I, I mean, all of this I'm finding out just now. But you know... I'm sorry. I'm eating a pistachio. Because <laughs> it must be Not a big pizza. one. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh-oh. All right. <clears throat> Rusalka, I think you did beautiful. Love the, the, um, what you have going on around your face. Totally that woman. And I think you look very elegant. I love it. I love it, love it. And I have to drink water. Yes, you have to drink water, and we'll be sending somebody over with the Heimlich maneuver. Okay, Rusalka, thank you very much. Alrighty, now, finally, we're going to bring back out Federica Galtio, whose rocket has come in for a safe landing <laughs> from earlier on in the show. Now, Federica is uh, inspired by Rihanna. So we're going to welcome back Federica Galtier onto the stage. Bit of an incident earlier with the debruising rocket. It took off and, well, she didn't return back, unfortunately. So we've got Federica back now as Rihanna. She is walking down here. Security, Very nice. Security, can we please, like, have somebody keep an eye on Frolic so poor Federica can actually stay on the stage this time. And I am so happy not to see you, Ruth, because you are such a lovely avatar. And Ruth is just, well, is Ruth. <laughs> so let me take a look at you now that I can actually see you. I love the hair, the hair you nailed. Um, that color, I mean, you could have even gone brighter with the hair because Rihanna's hair was that shade that kind of made your teeth hurt to look at, but it was so striking on her. I see the look that you're going for. But as I was saying earlier, I've always considered her to be kind of the satin and lace with the edge of leather look. And this to me is very pastel and very pretty. Um, I, I like the difference of the flavors and the fluff and everything, but it's not Rihanna to me. I don't see Rihanna in the outfit. But the hair, your face, your hair, even the flower in your hair is great. But the rest of it just doesn't say Rihanna to me. Leandra. Yeah, it is a color change of Rihanna. Um, her last outfits were a bit more colorful, a bit more um, flowers and things. And um, I like most the face and the hair because that could be a twin. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Leandra. And Frolic. Yeah, I'm getting um, a little gossip here from Robustus Hacks, our <laughs> producer from Betterverse TV, saying that he believes that uh, Rihanna wore this to the, um, <laughs> who's that chick, uh, who's that chick video. And uh, anyway, so thank you, uh, Mr. Robustus, for the little tip. Listen, um, <clears throat> Federica. I think you did well. I do like this. I think, um, I mean, the, first of all, because it's interesting to me to see what you did. You know, I, whether it's inspired on a dress, on a video or whatever, or a picture. If I look at the overall thing, I mean, sure, it could be Rihanna or it could be, you know, you know, a, a swan in the ballet, whatever. But, um, but I think artistically what you brought here today it's interesting and I and I am digging it I think it's um it's cute and and it does capture the essence of, of you know any artist really whether Rihanna or not and and um I'm liking it I like it I'm buying this Federica I'm buying it thank you all righty thank you very much okay well there we are Dusa we've seen all of the contestants yep uh -huh. today we have we're going to bring them all out and the judges are going to go into a huddle 
I think today we are letting two people go out of the competition. I believe that's right. And uh, so we're going to give the judges a little bit of time. So we'll bring everybody, all the contestants, back out onto the stage so you can have another look at them. Yes. Um, rockets or not. Ladies and gentlemen, please detach your rockets. I just want to say a little bit about Robustus Hacks there, Eddie. I mean, were you surprised by the fact that he knew what Rihanna was wearing in a certain video? Um, not particularly, because I've seen the video as well and I recognise the outfit. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm not a hardcore Rihanna fan. Although, you know, she's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, well, it's true, isn't it? She's. She's really become huge these last few years. I remember when she first came out, I kind of grew up with Rihanna a little mm. bit. When she first came out and she released uh, songs and she was, you know, she was popular, but not nothing huge. And now she's, uh, well, she's, you know, she's right up there with Beyonce and everybody else. She's very popular now. So it doesn't surprise me that Robustus knows about uh, what she wears in which video. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me either, but um, no, I was thinking about Rihanna actually, I mean, it's what happens when you dump your boyfriend, isn't it? You get much more energy, you get out there and you start focusing on the goal. Good for you, girl, that's all I've got to say. Exactly. <laughs> Alright, so all the finalists, all the contestants now are coming out and standing either side of the stage in their outfits. So, Dusa, whilst these are coming out, I think it would be good to talk about uh, your inspiration today. Um, should we go into that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Should we make people see if they can guess who we are, Eddie? I mean, if there's anybody out in the audience, and I have to say we haven't said this, but we have a very vociferous audience here who have really, in, in world, who have really, really been... Um, adding to the atmosphere here and I'm sure out on the net as well um, so what we need are guesses from the audience yes. so, yeah and let me just stress that remember the aim was not to look like the person because I don't look like my person I just <laughs> want to make that one clear don't but it's I to do, capture the essence see I think you do do you but because I know who you've gone for it Yes. You're looking for it, aren't you? Exactly. To me, it's like, yeah, I can see it definitely. Do you even know who mine was? What? I know you... who yours was because well, you told me. What, what, what do you think? Do you think it's captured the essence okay, of it? Okay, let me have a look. Let me zoom into you, Eddie, to get a chance to have a good look at him. Okay. Yeah, do you know what I think? I think okay. it needs um, an AO. To go with it. What I think that's AO? what it's an AO. What do you mean? No, I know you've got an AO, but you need the AO of that particular uh, body okay. language. Okay. That's what I think is missing, and I think that's what you think is missing. Because I think you've got everything else there. Okay. Okay. Oh well, I can deal with without the AO then. That that's fine. As long as I call the essence for you, so that matters. Right. Okay. Anyway, but I think you've done yours very well. Thank you very much. And we're not going to tell anybody, are we? Because they're not guessing. So you'll just have to see well, what... Somebody did. They said Diana Ross. For me? Well, uh, I hope it wasn't for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm certainly not Diana Ross. <laughs> <laughs> and you do look like Diana. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do so I want to explain uh, how this is going to work just okay. for our, our newer judges and for all of you and for all of my public, of course. Um, okay, so Kibera Madison will choose um, her favorite and then I will choose my favorite and we will go on uh, like that until we have three contestants left. Uh, when we have three, then <coughs> our guest judge, the beautiful Leandra Green, will save one last person and the two that are left will go. I'm sorry to say. So anyway, um, you can begin, Miss uh, Kimera, if Dusa is ready for this. Are you guys ready? Yeah, we're ready. All righty okay. then. Well, I have to say, you know, Eddie, you really don't 
strike me as Diana Ross, but if I ever catch you smoking on stage again, young man, you're grounded. I'm sorry. For those who don't know, Eddie's my son in SL. It's fighting. It's fighting. I'm just going to have to send him into his room for smoking on stage. My God, what was your manners? Who raised you? Anyway, okay, my choice, my first choice has got to be Miss Risa Friller because, I mean, all she's missing is the credit cards and Rodeo Drive. She, you are fabulous, my darling. I pick you. Thank you. Thank you, I Risa. Am, I am going to bring over to safety. Miss <clears throat> um, Imani Enzo, please. So, Imani, you're safe. And next, Landra? No, Chimera. Chimera? Yep, it's Chimera oh. and me until we have three, and then... Sorry, yeah, oh, oh, oh poor Leandra gets to one. do the yeah. nasty, okay. No kidding. <laughs> Leandra, I'm sorry. Okay, um, let me think. Let me look here again. I am going to say... Miss Natsuka, I'm not even trying that last name because I know I'll butcher it, but Miss Audrey Hepburn over there, she's lovely. Natsuka Milyandrovich. I am going to bring Rusaga Kalisto. I love this um, Alexander McQueen exercise you did. I mean, even though it's not Alexander, I can see the influence of the hats, the hair, and the beautiful clothes. Very nicely done. Okay, Mr. Mills, she was doing Isabella Blow. Keep it straight. Okay, who are we going to do next? Let's see here. I am going to grab Miss Michaela Benazi, Miss Lady Gaga over there. Can you hear me? <laughs> Am I talking? Okay. Yes, Michaela is safe. <laughs> it's that tension pause, isn't it, while you make up your minds? Okay, there are some it's ladies awesome. that I don't see here. Um, well, I particularly remember the, the yellow dress. She's not here. Did she crash anyone? Because she needs to be here for this. Hello, hello or, Zora, that was. Okay, okay. Maybe she's so she's not here, right? Um, I don't have... Did she crash earlier? Was it? Okay, anyway, Didi Raskin, first. please yeah. come on down, Miss Tuck. So Didier, you are safe. Frolic, you took my next choice. Dog on you anyway. Okay, <laughs> I am going to pick Miss Katy Perry up there and her fireworks. Miss Amazon Silverweb. So Amazon. Amazon, you are safe. I and I will bring Elizabeth Taylor, Miss Danai Ruby. Okay, Danai Ruby, you are safe. Uh, Helen Zora crashed. That's what happened to Helen, the yellow dress. Okay, I am going to choose, even though I was a little hard on her, and I apologize for that. I'm going to pick Hataluna Danes, Miss Kate Moss. I think with just a little bit more of cocaine, she'd have that down pat. Thank you. That's Hataluna Danes. You are in Hataluna. Okay, let's just explain quickly. There are five left now. Judges to choose. So, Frolic and Camara will choose one more each and then it will be down to Leandra to pick the last contestant that is staying and the two that are left unfortunately will leave so Leandra's got the best decision of the night okay next I will bring uh, 
Ah, uh, Miss Federica Gatier. <clears throat> So okay, Federica, yes. no, actually, okay. we have um, Chimera get to save one more person because remember we have that yellow dress person. Mm -hmm. So is not here, but we all remember. So uh, Kimmy, pick one more, and then your bottom three would be um, Aphrodite and Bluebell and uh, well, and Polina. On that other person, but you get to save somebody right now, Kimmy. Go ahead. I am going to choose Ramza Love because he's just so damn yummy. <laughs> 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 I think, I mean, I don't see David Beckham, but your styling, my love, is fabulous. So I choose. Oh, wait, I still get to choose one more because there's four yeah. people still, right? You, and I went first. You need to go one more time. Okay, uh, Paulina Lefebvre, come on down. All right, my dear guest judge, you get to be the witch of uh, the show. <laughs> it is, uh, people, don't get upset with Kimmy or, uh, or me. We love you all. It's Leandra who hates you all, okay? Leandra is the bad person here. Uh, Paulina, please come on down, you're safe. Okay, so Aphrodite, uh, we have... Uh, Bluebell, and you also have um, that woman in Helen. The, the Helen Sora, uh, who was doing Beyonce. Do you remember her, Leandra? Yeah, I remember. Okay, mm -hmm. so out of those three, you get to choose one last person. The other two, unfortunately, are going home. Okay. Go ahead. I already said I love them, and don't come back for four weeks at least. <laughs> uh, okay. I am going to choose Aphrodite to be saved because I know her and I know what she can do. Okay, Aphrodite Brianna, you are saved and it's we have to say a very sad farewell to Bluebell Andrade and Helen Zora and thank you for good gamesmanship and uh, taking part in styling forward. I know. All right, so we say goodbye to Helen and we say goodbye to Bluebell. Thank you both so much for um, being with us and for trying out. Um, if I may do so, I'd like to read out our beautiful sponsors who make this show possible. Absolutely. It's, uh, Azul Alafali, Champion Horses, the best of all magazine, Metaverse TV. Thank you very much, Metaverse TV, and I believe we are ready to wrap it up. Do so, happy. Right, we are indeed ready to wrap it up now. Editorial Clarity and Dusa Dragonash and Frolic Mills and Chimera Madison will all be back next week and we'll have another fabulous guest judge for you who's going to chop the head off the last one. So, um, everybody, if you want to queue up for Leandra Breed at the back door, please do so. At this oh, oh, wait. That's so brutal. <laughs> I have, I have, a, I have a little, I have a little. Please. <laughs> our last thing to say, Kimmy, would you like to choose the next Stalin and let them know oh, right yes. now? You know, he does this to me all the time. I always get like a two-second warning. Hmm. Let me think here. What can we do? It's something that's just weird. Um. Let's do. Last year. Oh. Okay. Can I give you an idea? Yes, please. <laughs> and give me one. All right. <laughs> well, no, here's the deal. I, Fossil Fashion Week is coming up very, very soon. One of my shows is Virtual Superheroes. Now, <laughs> I don't care. I don't want to see anybody in Batman. I don't want to see anybody in. Spider-Man, I don't want to be see anybody in El Zorro. I want you to come up with your own virtual superhero. I mean, think about what kind of, I mean, you could be like, I don't know, Mr. Scorpion, or you can be, I don't know, the, I don't know. You know, you need to- The Beast of Buffalo. Style the Beast, yes, the, the virtual beast from the universe. I don't know, something that looks like a superhero, 
that or, or or a villain i don't care uh but looks fabulous and that we could tell it looks like a like a like a comic uh dangerous and fabulous um hero that you know dc comics could go oh wow that's my next hero that's my next um okay. comic strip book that's what i want okay here think of it in those terms Marvel Comics is going to be making a brand new superhero and they're looking for the person who's going to design the costume that one's going to wear. It can't be anything that exists so far. So you have to come up with who the next super duper creature that's going to save the world is going to be. Perfect. I love Excellent. it. Excellent. Perfect fun. word in Chimera. Hot. And I'm going to say one thing. The top five, the top five Kimmy's and I favorites will be featured in Bustle Fashion Week. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Have a great day. Have great fun with this. And I'll see you all next Wednesday. Thank you. There we are, do so. There we are. We've come to an end of it. And if anybody wants to keep guessing, we'll give them a lovely prize. Send it on a note card to myself or to editorial. Well, I'm we'll dreading next week, if I'm honest with you now. <laughs> well, I've got the perfect one for you. Oh. Okay, well, I've sorted that. <laughs> Good. I'll trust you with it. Okay, I don't. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for taking part. And thank you for coming back next week. Take care, everybody. And good night.